I'll just d dive right into Lindy's, the preseason sure. rankings. Got LSU preseason number eight. Kind of two ways to look at yep. it, Lynn. A lot of talent, but they also lost a ton. So how did you and the staff fall on LSU at number eight? Well, here's – and, and we'll uh, tip, a, tip a little bit. That I think we've got maybe five teams in the top – five SEC teams in the top 12 and six in the top 15 or something like that. Uh, it's going to be a year when – I'm going to call it the big six in the SEC because it's been that way for a number of years now with two in the east and four in the west, and we've got it figured to be the same six teams. I think, I think Tennessee's making a move um, you know, to, get, to get in the right direction. But no, no team in the conference has got a slam dunk, Matt. When we started looking at them, I can, I can argue against every one of those six teams that we put high. And you know you can I can make a case where LSU uh, you know might not lose but a game and and be right in the final four picture again. I can make a case that LSU could lose four games, mm. and I wouldn't be surprised if either one of those being the truth. And I just about can say that about uh, 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 Alabama and uh, Auburn and A and M and Georgia and Florida. It's it's a year where we've got good teams, but every team lost a lot, but they lost different things. You know uh, LSU lost so many to the draft and losing Joe Burrow. Uh, Alabama lost, you know, a, a whole lot of people. Uh, Auburn lost the, you know, arguably two best defensive linemen that they've had on the on the team at the same time in the last, you know, thirty years. Um, I like A and M because they got Kellen Mond coming back. Uh, I think he's a. This is a senior year, and they've got a one of the top senior, uh, you know, quarterbacks coming back. Um, you know, is the is the quarterback coming to Georgia? Uh, is he really as good as they say, or is it because he played at Wake Forest? And in the last three or four games, Matt, he played at Wake Forest. Uh, they were they were bad. Mm. Uh, he did not have colossal games, you know, as they were as they were coming down the stretch there, um, you know. So, but what we like LSU. Uh, we have uh, every year we do unit rankings so that we'll take uh, three on the offense, the the running backs, the receivers, and the line. Three on the um, on the defense, the defensive line, the linebackers, and the defensive backs. So out of those six, LSU, according to our guys, LSU has the best units in, in a third of them. Two out of the three. LSU's got the best – we view that LSU has the best defensive backs. Of course, Stingley you know, helps them a lot. Good start. Sure. But we got LSU as having the best defensive backs in the country, and we got them as having the best receivers in the country. Hmm. Of course, having Jamar Chase is, go is going to be a great start there. But when you start out with two of your – two of the six units being the best in the country, but then, but then you can put it on the same side to show it's not – we got the number three defensive backs in the country being Georgia. We got Auburn, the number one linebackers in the country, and Georgia number two. We got Alabama, the number two uh, defensive line in the country. Uh, you know, we got Alabama, the number three offensive line in the country. Kentucky and Tennessee both in there. Uh, LSU, number one uh, with receivers. Uh, Alabama, number two. Uh, you know, so it's it's another loaded year for the SEC. But I think there's a good bit of balance, and and every team has got some area that you could hit on their deficiency. If the other interesting thing that I saw there, Lynn, is Florida ahead of Georgia in your preseason rankings. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And, why? And that was a, Go ahead. Uh, that was a tough call. Uh, Georgia, Georgia plays at Alabama, and um, and that and and that's going to be a tough thing for them. Georgia plays Auburn. Florida didn't. Florida doesn't play uh, Alabama, Auburn, or or Texas A and M. So the the toughest teams, of course, they do play LSU, but mm -hmm. they get LSU at home. So they get to play LSU in Gainesville, and they don't play the other three best teams out of the Western Division. Um, and they play Alabama, which they normally don't play, and they got to play them in Tuscaloosa. So, uh, you know, and they're bringing in, again, a question at quarterback. A lot of folks are putting him, you know, right up there with the, with the all-SEC quarterbacks, and maybe so. Maybe he's going to be. But uh, with all due respect to any Wake Forest fans in the audience, uh, you know, <laughs> he, he, played for, uh, he, he played for Wake Forest, and his last games were not good games. So I don't know. Uh, you know, they've got Georgia's – but they lost a good bit. Now, they've had the number one recruiting class in the country two straight years. But, you know, would you rather have experienced seniors out there or experienced freshmen out there or inexperienced freshmen out there? Yeah. So, it, you know, again, every, every one of them, I can make a case for Georgia being, being a Final Four contender, you know, but I can make a case that, uh, that you're putting way too, much on, uh, way too much on that quarterback and that they've got a tougher schedule than Florida's got. Are you? And, and I think I can make, make the case for that. I'm sorry, Lynn, Lynn Scarborough, Lindy's Magazine, lindyssports.com, back-to-back S's, lindyssports.com. Um, are you buying A&M? Well, up, up to a point. Here's the thing. A&M has got to prove to me that, that they are going to be able to beat Alabama, LSU, or Auburn. 
on a, on a consistent basis. They've never beaten Alabama or Auburn in College Station. Uh, I think Alabama's beaten them five straight times. Auburn's beaten them three straight times. Uh, and then you've got LSU who beat them last year like 50-7. to seven. Right. And so, you know, a- A&M's going to have if, – if I wanted to look at the quarterback situation, I, I may not take him over Bo Nix at Auburn, but, but Alabama's got – brings in, according to some people, the number one high school quarterback in the country. And uh, Jones is not a bad quarterback. People just didn't realize it because he was playing uh, behind Tua. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, yeah, I mean, I think, I think A&M's going to be good. Um, you know, Jimbo's been there before, but then Jimbo's not strapping on a uniform. Right. And, um, you know, I, I think for the amount of money that Jimbo's getting paid, that eventually he's going to have to beat, you know, the, since, since 2010, um, Alabama, LSU, and Auburn both have been in multiple national championship pictures. And Texas A&M hadn't been in one. And I don't think they brought him in and gave him the most money of anybody on the planet uh, to continue – to have three teams from the West that are in national championship pictures in Texas A&M not be one of them. Certainly. So I, I think it's kind of the pressure is going to be getting on him, Matt, to you know to turn it around and start uh, beating some of these guys. I hear you. Certainly feels like this is the year for A&M if ever there was a year. Flip it over to the East, Lynn. You mentioned Tennessee when we started. How much of a jump do you think Tennessee makes this year? Well, I think they, I think they could. They play, uh, they play Oklahoma at Oklahoma. And we've got Oklahoma picked like number four in the country. Uh, I'm going to tell you that we, we talk about these a lot. I think we may have some teams uh, rated a little bit higher than they're going to end up, and, and I think Oklahoma may be one of them. Hmm. Uh, I think Oklahoma State is going, to, is going to be a real threat to Oklahoma in, in, in the state and in the, and in the conference. But I think we'll know right off the bat. If Tennessee goes out against Oklahoma in the first, I think they play them in like second or third game. If they go out and do that and really, you know, and really come up strong, then I think, uh, I think Tennessee could be, could be getting there. You know, it's about time. I mean, that you know, you know, I probably talked about off the air that the the, the, uh, the they have had the worst name, the worst word uh, that you can put for a college football uh, fan base uh, for the last twenty years, with maybe a couple of exceptions. Irrelevant. Yeah. Tennessee, who who you know, historically only Alabama had won more games and been in the picture more than uh, more than Tennessee. But in the last twenty twenty five years, I can name you five other SEC teams that have that have just run away from Tennessee. And, you know, you, you're just not going to keep 106,000 people or whatever in the stands and, and keep them unhappy forever. Of course, this year it may not be but 20,000 with the virus. Right. But, um, but the point being that uh, they're ready to, uh, to start having a coach that uh, gets them there. Maybe uh, Jeremy Pruitt's the one that does it. He certainly is doing better in, in recruiting. So we'll, we'll see how he does on the field. A couple more minutes with Lynn Scarborough. Lindy's sure. magazine, the uh, preseason magazine is out. Lynn, by the way, before I go any further, I know there's – of course, like the national magazine, then there's the regional ones. Fill our audience yep. in on when, the when and where they can get them. Okay, yeah, you can. Uh, the national edition is is on stands now. Uh, the NFL edition, we're going on stands probably within this next week. I'll I'll take thirty seconds to go to NFL. New Orleans Saints fans in the audience, you need to go buy Lindy's NFL edition. That's all, that's all I'll say. Just okay. Trust me. Uh, whatever whatever you're paying. Uh, you're going to say that's the best uh, $10, $11, whatever it is that I've spent. Uh, if, that's, if that's a big enough tease, Got it. Uh, you, this is going to be a good year for you guys. So look for Lindy's uh, NFL edition down in your, down in your area. But, um, but yeah, we're, the, the, the Southeastern edition, you know, we, most people call it the SEC edition, but it's got, you know, Louisiana Tech, Louisiana Monroe, and, you know, and all the other, quote, smaller teams, plus, uh, you know, Clemson and Georgia Tech and Florida State and so on mm. are in our Southeastern edition. It will be on newsstands hopefully within the next week. Uh, you know, anywhere where good magazines are sold, as, as they would say, in your bookstores and, and your, uh, you know, your supermarkets and uh, uh, airports. If anybody's going to airports anymore, in the in the bookstores there. Uh, and if you can't find it, certainly you can call our office. But you can call us and you can uh, place the order there. You can go on our website and and uh, get it. And uh, if you can't find one, call and let us know, and we'll try to find it in the area where, where they're located. Again, the website, lindyssports.com. Back-to-back S's in the middle. Lindy's, L-I-N-D-Y-S, lindyssports.com. You mentioned the national edition is out. It, do you feel like this is a Clemson-Ohio State match and everybody else is playing for whatever else remains? Yeah, I mean, they're, if you look at it, they're better than everybody else. Uh, we got Alabama third, and I can, I can make a case that Alabama will be third in the Western Division. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we got them. We got them third in the country. Uh, Clem- Clemson, because of their backfield, you know, they got the running back back, they got the quarterback back, 
and and they play in uh, in the uh, ACC. I believe Clemson plays at Notre Dame, don't they, Matt? They do. I remember right on that. Yeah. Okay. So that's huge because Ian Book came back at quarterback for Notre Dame, and and you're going to say, well, have you bitten into the Notre Dame uh, candy again? And we've got them ranked like tenth. Um, you know, Notre Dame teases us a lot. And then when it gets down to really winning the big game or doing what they need to, they don't ever do it. And so I don't know. Maybe we got them. Maybe we got them too high to put them at ten. But that's a real threat for Clemson. And I'm going to tell you, a team to look out for is North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina with uh, with Mac Brown coming back. They had another good recruiting class, and they got a guy named Sam Howell, mm-hmm. who was the top freshman. In fact, you want to look at an interesting ball game. Uh, you've got you got Georgia and Virginia playing in the first game of the uh, Chick-fil-A Classic in, in Atlanta, and then you've got Auburn and North Carolina playing in the second game. And the quarterback pictures in, in those two games are really interesting. Sam Howell for um, North Carolina was the freshman of the year in the ACC and was first-team freshman All-American. Bo Nix was freshman of the year in the SEC and, and was behind Sam Howell on the freshman All-American team. So you got two two of the best sophomore quarterbacks in the country going against each other there. And then at Georgia, you're going to have a, a former Wake Forest uh, quarterback starting for Georgia and a former Mississippi State quarterback starting for Virginia. So uh, the, the conference has swapped quarterbacks uh, for the first game in Atlanta, hmm. and then you got two outstanding sophomores for the second game in Atlanta. So those will, those will be interesting to look at. Breaks it down as good as anybody. Lynn Scarborough of Lindy's Magazine. Make sure you get out, pick up the National Magazine, which is out right now. Make sure if you're a Saints fan, which of course you all are in this uh, region, uh, pick up the NFL preview as well. Lindy'sSports.com to order online. Lindy'sSports.com. Lynn, we always appreciate you, man. Hopefully we'll see you in a press box somewhere soon. Yeah, absolutely. Always good to talk to you, Matt.